Welcome to OTS part 3. In this session we are going to have a look at how we get our music from a CD into OTS. Now to do that we need a program called OTS Studio. It's the easiest way. And this is OTS Studio. It um, allows us to import our tracks from a CD into this file that we can then save ready for use. Now we click on, we have of course got our CD in the CD player on the computer there. We click on this little icon here which says import the audio CD and we get a list in here that shows us that we have a CD in there with 10 tracks on it. Now you can either select one of those tracks or a few of those tracks to import but you would normally just simply select all and then click on the import button and it will start a process and you will see here the top line will indicate the progress of the individual track the bottom line down here indicates the overall progress so when both of these blue lines reach this end here you'll have finished now because it's going to take a little bit of time I am going to push the pause button on the recorder and come back when it has almost finished so you can see the progress. Okay, now as you can see we've made a little bit of progress here. We've imported seven or it is in the process of report, importing the seventh track of this. Um, it takes about <coughs> five to ten minutes to do this particular session here on my computer it will vary from computer to computer because of the amount of memory you have or the speed of the computer to do as you can see it reads through the tracks reasonably quick the other things that you need to look at too is your um, file quality size. These tracks are coming in at um, 44 100Hz which is the frequency size and at um, 16 or 160 kilobytes which is around about CD quality. I will later show you in, in, in the um, Odd Studio where to change these settings but you want to keep a good quality for uh, OTS to work with. Once you have that set in there you shouldn't need to change it. As we just about finished we've got our tenth track and it has finished. We come up with this little piece of information here which tells us that it's done nine actions which is the import and uh, the import eleven tracks warnings and errors uh, if you have problems with reading the CD if one of the tracks are faulty or something like that you will get the warnings and errors um, if you do get anything you can view the log and it will tell you what track you had the error with somewhere within here for example if this track had been faulty it would have given you a little bit of an error message there telling you what it was about but since it imported everything correctly we can close that off and have a look here. Now we have, I'll just increase the screen a little bit there. Okay, and first of all, we'll have a look at the options. Okay, there's the encoder settings. In this section here is where you define. 440 by 16 which it has by default but it needs to, you need to check that just so that you know that you've got the right quality and this is where you all set it here see this has all been set to automatic okay as I said before by default it should set to this but it pays to just check that you have that 44100 by the 160 okay now we've imported the tracks into what studio but as you can see none of the tracks have any titles or anything 
Now you can do this here by one track at a time as you can see you have the title here, you have the artist here uh, release information um, you know what year it was released or anything else like that um, if you want to put it in you can I don't use it but really you need to title your artist and the genuine information right now we imported a Eagles CD so we're going to have to have the artist as Eagles so we'll type Eagles in there E G E A G L E S okay now these are all Eagles so what we'll do is we'll leave the title track blank for now because what I'm going to go down here is and you put the genuine I strongly recommend that you put this genuine information in here now at this stage because otherwise you're going to have to go back and edit each track individually whereas if I was to put in J E W -E F and they're a group um, and they're from about the 1970s um, and you can put whatever other life information you want in there but you separate each category that you're using each genre with a comma must be a comma as you can see there we've got Jeff comma G R A U P comma 1970s right you could of course can have the genuine as um, whatever you like um, you might want to put in hard rock or rock uh, you might want to put in American or USA um, you can go on there for as long as you like putting in all kinds of information um, for as long as you like so long as you separate each one with a comma and you can have up to 128 different genuas in this area so you can have a fairly lengthy line there and plenty of room for you to work with now as you can see we have not put the title for this track in as yet and you'll see why because as we go up here what we're going to do now is click on the item bulk chunk references we click on that you'll get this window here which is basically asking you if you want to repeat the artist title and the genuine information for all of these tracks now you could sit there and type each one individually if you wanted to but if you answer yes to this and again for the for the genera right, you'll find that if you come down to each one of these they all have exactly the same information in them it saves you having to retype all that information to over and over. Now the other reason why I clicked on here is because if you right click you get this option here and you get the item copyright. I put my name in here you would put your name in or if you want to go and put um, the record company name in or whatever I put my name in there so that when it shows up in OTS I know it's one of my tracks or if somebody else is yours in it they can see it's one of my tracks it identifies the music track as my track that's why I put that in there okay now you type in the title over here and the first track that we have on this Eagles CD is take it easy so we'll type in take it easy there why and we click on the second track to do and as you can see it is inserted take it easy up there and we're ready to enter the second track which is which we want W I T C H Y W O M A N and we click on down to the next one okay now the next one down is C 
Okay, and you just simply work your way down there. Uh, you work your way down the list, name in each track. I won't do all of them at this stage because it will take a bit of time. And also, I'd like to show something to you when we've finished. Okay, but you really need to at this point get all the information about the tracks in like I said the title the artist and what, however you want to categorise them within OTS which is your genius as I said you can have 128 of them on there right and you then need to save the files and for that you need to export them okay and we want to export them as individual OTS files you could do them as mp3s if you wanted to but if you did them as mp3s or waves you would lose a lot of this information here for example mp3 files can only handle one genya which would be of course the Jeff one here All right waves don't have any so we need to as individual OTS files so you click on the individual OTS files and it asks you in what format you want to do it now this bit here title and artist or artist and title this determines how the file, <coughs> how the file is saved whether the artist is listed and then the title or whether you have the title and the artist I prefer the artist first. Uh, radio station you're, you're with Jan also uses the artist first, so you leave that there. Um, you're saving it as an OTS format. Okay, so there's not a guess you need to set there, but what you need to do is you need to set where you're going to save it to. And we're going to save it to uh, the D drive and um, We'll put it in, we'll have to make a folder by the looks. Um, okay, we'll put it in the um, temp folder for now. Okay, you click OK. Then you click, actually what I might do is, I don't know, this will be interesting. I have never tried this before, I've just typed in a folder name there that does not exist. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. It may give me a message, error message, or it may actually ask me if I want to create the new folder. See what happens. Create it, yes. Oh, well it is handy, it allows you to create new folders. So we say yes to that. And as you can see, it is ex it exported, and it gave us six warnings. Those six warnings will be to do with the tracks that we didn't tag. Okay. See there, warning. Fire no might is missing. The title of artist chunk is missing. Okay. <coughs> but that's all right. When you've saved them, you've finished with this piece. So you file and you close. This will ask you a little question here. Right. Current ice object has been saved and has been edited. Do you want to save it? What this is referring to here is saving it as a what would turn up as an album. Um, we've saved them as individual tracks so we need to say no to this here otherwise you end up saving well actually I'll save it no we'll go with no no you don't you don't need to always answer no to this All right and we're finished with that and if we go to Windows Explorer down to our 
D drive and to the Otswork folder you will see that we have our 10 tracks and as you can see it has put the Eagles the artist name first divided by and this is very important here a space the hyphen mark and a second space Ots distinguishes as the point where the artist is separated from the song title now as you can see we have got the four that we named but because we didn't name, name did not name the other tracks we've ended up with this we don't know what those tracks are and that's the way they will show up in Ots when we go to play them okay we'll do that once more you go to your Ot Studio program running up to the input audio CD you have the tracks there in your CD you can refresh the drive what it will do it will go back and check the CD and see what's there you then select all and you import them And as you can see, it started with the first track. I again will pause the recording here until we've got most of it done again. Okay, as you can see, we've just about done the ninth track. And we've just started on the tenth track. We're importing the tenth track. And this bar down here, of course, is just about finished. So we'll give it a minute to finish doing that track. Of course some CDs will have more tracks or less tracks and the time process will vary accordingly. There we are, we have our little message telling us that we've done that little bit of work. And we can now click on the close button. I can't, I just gone and froze on me for some reason. Why is it frozen on me? Although we have a problem. Now we have it set itself. It took a little bit of time thinking about it. Okay, once we've had this little message, we can close that off and we're given our 10 tracks that we can then add the title to, the artist to, and the genuine information. And as I said, the uh, item copyright the other information you have here is of course the composer if you want to type in who composed the music you can do that um, this information is not readily available to you unless you actually go into this art studio and retrieve it so I don't worry about it but the item copyright will show up in art studio go with all of these so whichever one of these has now got that copyright on it and the genre of course as before J -E -double -F, the comma to separate each genre uh, they're a group and they're from the 1970s yeah, we'll say 70s okay and that will apply to every one and of course the artist will be every track so we'll put the eagles in there okay and as you can see it's asking us if we want to keep the artist information for each track we say yes and for the genuine information we say yes and you'll find that that information has been copied down to every track that you've got here then you've just simply got to go back to the first one type in the title which was take it easy and we'll go down and we'll do the tenth one this time just to um, confuse things trying and we'll do the ninth track which is peaceful easy feeling watch your typing Ok, 
Okay. Of course, once you've tagged all of them, then you can go back up to File and export them. Export as individual OTS files. Okay. And then you select the folder you want to put them in, which of course is where we want to put the OTS work one. Now we're going to get a little bit of an overwrite message here because I've already got files in there. You've checked that you've got Art Studio Artist and Title. If you export them, we'll overwrite it. Okay, overwrite it, overwrite, overwrite, overwrite. We got those little messages because, as I said, we had already done the CD once before. Okay, now that we've finished all of that work, we now go up here to close and we answer no to this because we don't want to save it as a bulk. Say no and you exit OTS Studio. And as you can see, we've now got uh, a mixture of tracks there. The ones that we did twice, so you just take it easy, still there once. Uh, the other ones that we did before, 9 and 10 have been named, but you'll see that we've still got the 9 and 10 from the first time round there, okay? Now, of course we've got Studio, you can do other things, what's Studio, File, you can import, well we've done the audio CD which is what we just did up here, but we can also import OTS Wave or OTS files, Wave files, MP3 files, okay? But we're going to go back to and we're going to import those OTS files, okay? Now you've got this window here where it asks you what you want to do. Now you want to add some files to be imported. We don't want to bring those in at this stage. We'll go and find the ones that we did which is this one here and you've got these ones here we'll bring them all in so we'll use the shift and select all open and there you have them all listed there when you've got them all we will import them one at a time close that window and there we have them all listed there okay now we have those ones there that did not have a name and the ones of course that we had named okay from here you of course can edit the files and uh, we've got item one there let's see what that was now you could push the play button at got to turn that off because I get the music in my ears and I can't hear what I'm saying. Play the track, identify it, type the title in there and then you just simply export it back out again as individual OTS files or as MP3 files. Let's do it as MP3 files for the purposes of the exercise. We're going to keep the artist title ratio and we're going to put them in the same folder and we just simply click export and as you can see they've exported them out very quickly okay the nine warnings will be again because we don't have a title close when we're finished we close that off we answer no to that file and exit and as you can see we now have a selection of the same tracks but in mp3 format and as you can see, they're identical in the names, excepting that these are MP3 and those are OTS formats. But if we go up here and have a bit of a sort, you'll see that the track size for the OTS file is slightly smaller, which of course means that you know when you've got thousands of tracks, you've got a little bit more room for just those few extra tracks it also means that because we have an OTS format, the OTS format file can hold more information, whereas the MP3 format 
Ott needs to create an extra file, which we will look at later. But those Ott's files are ready to be loaded into your Ott's system. But we will now get rid of the MP3 formats because I don't want them. Well, no, actually, we will use them. We will to show. Because what we're going to do now is we're now going to run Ott's Studio. Ott's, uh, not maybe three actually. We want Ott's there. Yes. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to clear all of these out of here. These are the tracks that we put in before, but I don't want them there for now because they're only going to confuse the issue. So we can go up here to Media Library and say clear all. And we don't want to save it. Okay, now as far as what's concerned, there are no tracks, they don't exist. We go up and do our file and import refresh folder and report import refresh now we need to find those ones that we just did which were on the D drive in the odds work okay now if we click on OK it is now importing again I've got to turn the sound off Okay, now yeah, because it's working on the MP3 files, it takes a little bit longer to work with MP3 files, and I'll show you why in a minute. Lots of files it will bring through fairly quickly. Okay, so it's brought in at 30 odd tracks for us to work with. Now if we go over to the uncategorized area here, you can see what's happened. Okay. The MP3 files, Take It Easy and Eagles, they've been filed, that's all right. The same with the odds ones. But back up here, you can see these are the ones where we had the title, but we didn't have a song track listed, so it wasn't able to bring anything in. And these are the MP3 files that simply got saved as 050403, so we have no information there available to us because it didn't have any as we saved them. Okay? Now, the other thing we will find too is that if we would try to categorise these by selecting all of them, we should know this little bit by now, and categorising them all by genuine information, yes, create that category, create that one, that one, and we click on that, you'll find all the items, there's 30 of them there, 15 of them haven't been categorised. And they are the MP3 files. And as you can see, if we go to uh, Jeff, the MP3 ones have been because they've retained their categories. Right? MP3s, as I said, only handle one. But the other interesting thing is if we go back to our files on the disk and have a look at them, we'll sort this out to, to clean it up again, you'll see that with each MP file there's an extra file. This file here holds the information about this track that the OTS version has within the file itself. Alright, as you can see that OTS file there does not have an extra file, whereas each one of these, there's that one there that goes with that one, that one there goes with that one, that one there goes with that one, but with the OTS files, there are none. So you can see how it pays to put everything in OTS format. As you can see there, we've got just the OTS file there, but the MP3 version has the file itself and the extra file that OTS has created that stores the information about the track 
that they can't store in the MP3 format, but they can store in the OTS format. Okay. So it pays to go to OTS format because of the amount of files and because of the size of the files. As I said before, if you look at the size of this file here compared to the file there, <coughs> it is slightly smaller. So that 4889 there contains the same information that that 4912 plus the 11 hold. Okay. And that is pretty much all there is to importing from a CD. Now I will close that off, exit the program. We don't want to save that information. Exit. Now we'll start up OTS Studio again. And we're going to import some MP3 files, uh, which could just as easily be WAV files, but these will be what you would do if you've got files on your hard drive already that are in either WAV or MP3 format, as opposed to one of CD. Click on the Add Files, and we'll take that MP3 file there, that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there, and we'll open them up. So we've got them listed there. You then click on the Import button, and it will import them. It should not take too long, as you can see. Of course, a slower computer would take a little bit slower to do, or a faster computer would do it faster. Okay, all done successfully, and we get that information there. We can then, of course, edit the files from here. We type in the um, J E double F comma group comma nineteen seventies, and it will change to all of them. Yes. All right. So you'll see that they've all got that now. Okay. And you then file and export as individual OTS files. We'll put them in the same folder, which means it will probably want to overwrite some of them because we've already got some in there. Okay. This overwriting section here would not normally ha happen if you're saving the files for the first time. I'm getting this message now because, as you can see, we've had multiple copies of the same track in the folder. OK, and then you simply File, Close, answer no to that question, exit the program, and we have our tracks in there ready to go, which are these ones here that we just did. OK, and that is the end of OTS Studio at this time.